I'm going to talk about auto value extensions. So how many people know of or use auto value currently? So it's like half. Um, unfortunately, I'm not gonna go real deep into what auto value itself is. Um, moreover, uh, more about just what extensions kind of provide on top of auto value. So really quickly, um, auto value basically gives you something called value types on Java. Uh, it's something we'll hopefully get in the language itself in Java 10, but um, kind of being stuck in the dark ages of Java 6-ish on Android, we need something else. And so auto value gives us a way to declaratively write a class um, which has properties, and that, that class also gets things like equals hash code and two string. Um, it's immutable, and so uh, we can we can use it in ways like it was a value type, where a value type is kind of like um, primitives that Java offers. These are basically immutable classes that you can pass around, uh, and you can you can never mutate, so you get all kinds of nice guarantees out of it. The way that auto value works is that it generates a class on the side. And so in our types that we write, uh, you provide a static method which calls into this auto value underscore payment class. And this is gonna be generated automatically based on the fact that there's an annotation on top. And we get all this crap that you don't wanna to have to write for free. The equals two string hash code and the, um, the private final immutable properties which are exposed by the methods that we wrote. And so when people start using this, you go, okay, auto value, awesome. Except, well, how do I use it with parsable? Or JSON? Or maybe cursors? Or whatever, you know, there's a million things that you wanna take this value type and apply it to something that the library itself wasn't originally written for. And so that's exactly what auto value extensions are for. So I'm gonna start with the parsable example because this is about Android. Uh, as a value type, a type that just holds values, we have things like bundles and intents that we want to pass this data through to, or through with, to something else. And so ideally we have a uh, parsable, uh, this implements the actual parsable interface so that we can just shove it into a bundle or a parcel or an intent. Except the problem is that we're not writing this class. Someone else is writing this class. So how do we get a parsable implementation? The way that this works is that um, an, when you include an auto value extension, which does this for you, it starts off with the normal implementation where we have your class that you wrote and the class that's generated that has all the crap that I showed. Except what happens this time is that because that extension is present, another class gets inserted into the hierarchy. And so this time, uh, the auto value underscore payment class, the topmost class, the class that we're instantiating in that static method, becomes the parsable implementation. The, uh, the value type implementation goes between the two and that one extends your original class. So now in your static method, when you instantiate the auto value underscore parsable class, it's the thing that's gonna have the creator method. It's the thing that's gonna have um, describe contents and write to parcel. Since it extends from the original auto value class, you get, you know, still have the immutable uh, properties, you still have equals hash code and two string, and then obviously it extends from your class, so you can use payment as the type in your code. You don't have to know about these generated classes except for that one static method. But let's look at, uh, so I, I chose payment, we're, this is Square, we're a payments company. Um, we can't log everything, we, there's things called personally identifiable uh, identifiable information. And so um, let's say we want to say redact information from toString. You know, we're using these types as value types, we're passing them around. We don't want your credit card number or you know, even your name or phone number or whatever being logged somewhere public that uh, it can accidentally be seen. So uh, auto value is generating the toString method. Um, but we can actually use extensions to uh, basically replace it. So if we go back to our three classes that we have, we have the one that we wrote on the bottom, the one that's being generated by auto value proper, and then the one generated by uh, the parsable extension. We can actually just put another one in the middle. Um, this one's below the, the original auto value one. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. And all it does is implement two string. 
So we, we take the logic that implements toString, we copy it into our extension, which we'll look at how to, what, what they do in a second. Uh, and that first class, which extends payment, implements toString. Then auto value runs, and it, it generates its implementation, and it sees that there's already a toString. And it's like, okay, you got toString, I'm just gonna do equals hash code. And then at the very top, we still get our parsable stuff. Ugh, I did this last time. I got sweet highlights and I didn't use them. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of these extensions that are, uh, are available. Well, maybe not a lot, depending on what, uh, what you think is a lot. But the ones that are gonna be, uh, there's a lot for the, the things that are most useful, probably on Android. So I talked about Parsable, um, which is hugely useful. Redacted, which is uh, useful for us, probably not a widespread use case. Um, then there's JSON and Machi, which are JSON serialization libraries. So it allows these types to be serialized to JSON, uh, but more importantly, it allows them to be deserialized. So when um, JSON or whatever needs to deserialize the type, it has to actually instantiate that uppermost generated class, and the extension basically allows it to do that. Uh, there's one for cursor, so it basically just allows you to um, map database columns. Um, you give it a cursor and it reads a row from the database, pulling columns and setting them on those properties. And because it's an immutable type, uh, oftentimes you'll see that you have an instance and you just want to change a, a single property. You want to update an amount. You want to change the person's first name or whatever. And so the last one is something called withers, and they're basically methods that only change one property and return you a new instance. So I can say I have my $5 payment, and I call the with, with amount, $10, and I get a new instance that has all the properties copied over except that new, uh, that new amount value. But what I think is more important is that this is an API, and it's open for implementation for uh, whatever you can think of. And so I'm gonna quickly run through how easy it is to um, create one of these. So hopefully if you run into something where you're like, oh, it'd be awesome if Auto Value did this, you can actually do it yourself and open source it. Um, so it's four methods. Four methods creates an extension. The first one is just deciding whether or not the, type, the extension is applicable for a class. So in our example uh, earlier, I showed parsable and redacted. Um, so for parsable, it just looks at the class and says, does this implement parsable? This one doesn't, so I just turn false. And now the extension is done. It's saying, I, have nothing to, I want nothing to do with this type. But on the other hand, if we actually implement parsable on our type, it's gonna return true, and that means the other methods will be called. And it, it's not just the class that you can look at, you can look at any property, of, uh, any property inside the class as well. So in the redacted extension, we don't wanna waste time re-implementing the toString if you're not redacting anything. So if it doesn't see a property with a redacted annotation, it just says no. Otherwise, if um, any one or more has it, it says yes. This is really important on Android, especially because these things actually generate classes, and those classes have methods, and when you're using auto value all over your app, there can be hundreds of these. And so if you're always generating you know, four or five classes for every type, you're gonna have wasting a ton of space in your app. And so by having these uh, extensions opt out of doing when there's nothing to do, uh, you end up saving deck space, which improves basically everything in your app. The next one is interesting, um, must be final. And so I talked about how the parsable one is kind of generated at the top, it's the topmost, but the redacted one it kind of sits between the two. Uh, must be final basically just controls that, and I don't know any other use case that you would use must be final true unless you're parsable. Um, if you can think of one, let me know, but just return false from this guy. And so you can see, well you can't really see, but it basically just causes where your class gets generated in the hierarchy to change. Only one extension can be final, and so if you're using parsable, that's it. Uh, otherwise, uh, auto value will take care of like sorting the rest. So just return false from this if you're implementing one. And then um, consume properties, also interesting. This kind of has to do with parsable uh, and also the withers. 
If you think about the methods that Parsable has, everyone thinks of write to parcel. Write to parcel is the, the meat of Parsable. But uh, as I mentioned, there's one called describe contents. And it's, uh, it takes no arguments and it returns an integer. It usually just returns zero. But if the extension doesn't say anything about consumed properties, auto value is going to think that that is a property, that that's a thing inside your auto value class. You care about the note and you care about describe contents because those are the two methods with no arguments and return types. And so this basically just lets you say, oh, my extension is going to handle describe contents. You know, don't put that in hash code. Don't put that in equals and two string. And then the uh, last one does what it says. This is the one that generates the class. So um, you get your class name handed to you. So this will be uh, auto value underscore payment with some amount of dollar signs before it. You get your base class, which you just extend from. Uh, and then whether or not you should be final. So you're either going to be abstract or you're going to be final. And then you do whatever you want. Generate whatever you want. Make, make that class, as long as it does those three things, you can add any functionality into auto value that you want. Um, if you're going to build an extension for whatever reason, just look at the existing ones. Um, they've gone through the pain of figuring out the extensions API, how it works, uh, interacting with the auto value people and making sure it suits all of the hopefully potential needs that you'll ever have. Uh, so they're pretty much doing things right and you'll want to copy their example. And then the last thing is uh, just play nice. So uh, the must be final thing. There can only be one extension at a time uh, in like a single compilation that's final. And so since parsable has to be final, it basically, if someone else wants to be final, you know, that's, you're not going to be able to do a build. You're not going to be able to use both of those. Uh, and so it's the same with toString. Redacted extension wants to handle toString, which means if someone else wants to do something fancy, those are not going to play well together. And so if you're, if you're writing one of these, just try and think of how you can do the least amount of work possible to add your functionality and not affect uh, any, any other potential extensions in use. These are the four libraries you're probably going to want if you're writing an extension. Java Poet helps you write Java code, generate a Java code. Uh, the next two, Truth and Compile Testing by Google, are how you're going to uh, test your extension, and you are going to unit test your extension. And the last one is, um, in order for AutoValue to find your extension at compile time, it uses something called Service Loader. And Service Loader is this Java thing where you have to create this weird class, uh, or sorry, this weird file in your jar. AutoService just takes care of that for you. You just annotate your extension, and it's going to generate it for you. You never have to think about it, and you're never going to forget it. OK, uh, this is all nice and, and rosy and awesome, except uh, none of this stuff is released. Um, it's, it's in the GitHub repo, and it's been there for a while. But unfortunately, it's only in a snapshot version. And so. Uh, like I did on Tuesday, I'm going to use this opportunity again to do a little bit of public shaming on Google by showing a timeline of AutoValue's history. It starts with the Big Bang, and this is the real Big Bang of the universe. <laughs> then 14 and a half billion years pass. Uh, we get AutoValue 1.1. This was about 10 months ago, 11 now. And soon thereafter, in the same month, the extensions API, which was being worked on a little bit ahead of time of this, gets merged into master 10 months ago, nine, 10 months. And unfortunately, it's been nine, 10 months, and nothing has happened. Uh, we've ironed out one or two tiny things. Other people have ironed out one or two tiny things. But it basically just sits there. And so hopefully sometime between now and the heat death of the universe, uh, we're going to get an auto value 1.2. And so if you, if, you, if you build apps for a, a company, you shouldn't be using snapshots. Uh, you should be using released versions because you want a stable build. You want to be able to check out old builds uh, and have them still work and compile. You want other developers to be ensuring that you're getting the same versions. Um, snapshots are terrible. So I really want you to use this. It's, it's actually really fantastic, and it's saved us a lot of uh, effort. So if you're going to, and Sometime between now and the heat death of the universe, or whenever 1.2 is released, uh, just make sure you figure out a way to create your own build of it. 
grab the jars off of um, soda type snapshot repo, check the entire project into your source control, uh, you just do whatever to make sure that it's going to be stable because the extension API has changed and um, Google has kind of hinted that it might change a little bit again before the final release whenever that happens. Um, but it's a really fantastic uh, addition to auto value which already provides a lot of value, no pun intended. Um, so I do encourage you to go check out both auto value if you haven't seen it or these new extensions which add this great functionality which is especially relevant to Android. And that's it, thank you.